so I'm going to start by asking you a question. So how many of you commute to work using their own car? But there's not a lot, but maybe 10% of I mean it is. Well, uh, basically, what I'm going to talk about now is the problem with car occupancy. Uh, most people who commute by car will commute usually on their own by car, and uh, it all clogs up the road. There's a lot of people commuting by cars, and it takes basically a lot of room on the road. So I'm going to have a, a, a photo in a, few, uh, in a few slides showing what the problem is. So that's going to be the first uh, part of my uh, presentation is going to be to explain about the problem. Uh, second part, I'm going to describe uh, some of the APIs and the server environment that we have. And then I'm going to, do, to go through a few examples of API calls. First, uh, static on the slides, and then if we have a bit of time, um, basically going directly to, our, uh, to calling some um, APIs. So a lot of money of every single household is uh, spent um, in transportation, transporting goods, transporting yourself, trans uh, transport services, and so on. Uh, so I have a few numbers here. I won't bore you with numbers, but 20% um, of commuters in London spend uh, about an average of two hours a day commuting to and from work. Uh, so there's a lot of time. E uh, EU drivers, um, basically, uh, on a third of the world's 750 million cars. And in the next um, like 20 or 30, yeah, 35 years, the number of cars is about to triple. So you're going to have three times as many cars on the road in uh, 2050 as you're going to have uh, today. Uh, the problem is this, is that it's not good, just going to be three times slower to get to work or to get anywhere. Uh, the time it takes is ex exponential given the number of cars on the road. So if you only have uh, a few cars on the road, you're going to go very, very, very fast. Um, because the road's going to be empty, you're going to be able to drive very fast. As the number of cars on the road start to accumulate, your speed will decrease, 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 and then you're going to hit the critical mass where you basically get to a state where you're complete traffic and then nobody moves. And it has been proven many times that uh, if you have a lot of traffic on a very congested motorway, uh, what happens is that at, basically at peak hour on a completely packed motorway, the, the, basically, the throughput of the motorway is a fraction of what it is when it actually is idle and there's only very few cars on the road. So imagine you have a, a motorway with like four lanes of cars completely packed and there's actually fewer cars going through this motorway than if you were uh, pretty much on your own with 150 meters in front of you and same behind you. So there's a big problem there. The roads, uh, the roads are not scalable. So does this commute look like you? So do you have uh, if you are driving to work, does this look like what you're doing? Uh, on buses as well, uh, I mean, I used to take the bus to go to work and to do my four kilometers, it used to take me about to, um, up to an hour and a half. So that's pretty shocking. Uh, my next door neighbor actually walks to work because it's faster than taking the bus. So this is what happens on a lot of motorways, especially at peak hour in the morning. But it doesn't have to be this way. So this is the same photo. So you have a look at the photo on the left-hand side. Here, what I've done is uh, we've removed the cars. So this is um, uh, an image courtesy of the Washington Department of Transportation. They've actually done this experiment just to show you in a picture what it looks like and the complete waste of space on the motorway. So this is the motorway that you saw in the previous picture. This is what it looks like if you remove the cars, you just have the, basically the passengers, and usually there's only one passenger per car who is the driver. And then this is what happens if you use public transportation. So you have uh, a bus, some kind of a minibus, uh, and potentially a few couples uh, behind. And the motorway is completely empty, and you're going to have a massive throughput there. So you're going to have a lot more people going through this motorway than if you were uh, driving on your own. So this is a big problem that we're trying to solve. What we're trying to do is we're trying to uh, help people couple together in order to reduce uh, the amount of uh, cars on the road. So we should never really drive alone to work any longer. In some places, uh, you have very good um, public transportation. Like, I was amazed this morning in Paris. I came here uh, at peak hour. It was about uh, between half past eight and nine. And uh, I took public transportation. And then I walked for still quite a bit from uh, Republic. And uh, what I saw was just empty streets. I mean, this is fantastic. Like, the public transportation inside Paris looks like it's very good. Looks like a lot of the people are driven off the motorways onto public transportation. Um, in, uh, in Ireland, in Cork, where, where I work, uh, at peak hour, uh, every single road is a parking lot. Every single car is stopped. And it can take you an hour and a half to do a few kilometers. So in order to solve this problem, uh, basically this is why we created this company a few years ago, 
and uh, our mission is to help people couple together. And in order to help with this mission, we've created the Karma Prize. So if you listen carefully, uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can listen and you can uh, figure out how to make $1 million. And this is actually real money. So we've created this uh, million dollar Karma Prize to help society improve carpooling and improve car occupancy. So uh, the prize is uh, composed of three different prizes, actually. Uh, so the first prize is uh, half a million dollar for startups. Uh, who want to apply to our Karma Accelerator to help, basically. So we're helping some companies uh, basically create some carpooling apps or whatever it is to reduce um, uh, traffic on road and uh, increase car occupancy. Uh, the, um, the applications for this uh, prize have actually just closed on Friday. We've got a bit over 40 applications, and we just started sieving through all these applications at the moment. So you can't apply for this one. It's a bit too late. There's still two other prizes. The second prize is a $1 million prize for any Karma employee who verifies 1,000 daily trips. So there's, um, there's, um, there's rules about this. Like we had, it has to be over three months in a single location and so on. And uh, there's a third prize uh, of $1 million uh, to an, an external API employee, uh, non employee, so an external API developer or team who can uh, verify things 10,000 daily trips over a, a period and a set location as well. So uh, we have an open API. I'm going to talk about the open API now. And uh, if you want to have a bit more information about the rules, the information, how to access the, uh, the API, have a look at uh, this website, and it'll tell you all about how you can apply. Uh, we also have some open positions. So if you're looking for a job uh, software developer, um, we're looking for some really good ones. And then you can apply for uh, the Kama Employee Million Dollar Prize. So now let's talk a bit of our, about our APIs. So we have some APIs, and um, they provide access to everything that the camera app can do. Uh, so the camera app is an app you can download on iOS and Android, and uh, it lets you find some people who are uh, basically uh, traveling to work uh, in the same uh, direction as you, going back home in the same direction as you. So uh, you can talk to, the, to each other, and eventually you can do a carpool together. So it deals with user registration, user discovery, user to user messaging, bookings, and obviously picking up and dropping off um, passengers or uh, joining a driver's car. And there's a lot more, obviously, as well. So this, uh, the API is fully documented. And uh, it's also the same API that our application uses. So we are publishing the whole API uh, set for other applications uh, to, uh, to use as well. Uh, obviously, there is uh, some uh, security to this API. Uh, we obviously authenticate, authorize users, and so on. But there's also some um, OAuth credentials, so we use OAuth. Uh, there were a couple of really good presentations this morning on OAuth, application security, uh, security in general. Um, and um, so I hope that some of you actually attended this. They were really, really good. Um, and uh, so our client API uh, requires OAuth um, authentication and authorization. And uh, so you have to uh, sign up on our uh, api.calma website. Uh, you can send an email as well. So we support three different OAuth flows. So we, we had a very, very quick uh, overview of OAuth flows this morning. Uh, we talked very, very quickly about that in a different presentation. So we support the auth code, the implicit, and the password uh, flows. And you need to obviously use the correct one depending on whether it's a, a, an app, a website, or whatever you're using in order to provide good security. Uh, so we, uh, we have a development server, so we have several environments. Uh, we have a development server, we have several um, like um, QA um, servers and development servers as well, and uh, we have a production server. And uh, you can very easily get access to the development servers. So we provide access to all the APIs and it's intended for development. Uh, you can use, uh, so we provide an uh, example client and uh, example uh, auth token for the dev environment. Uh, but you really should really apply for your own uh, token. We may probably um, like uh, delete these uh, tokens very quickly. Uh, so you really should apply for one. Uh, again, the website is api.dev.car.ma. So this, um, this is the, the dev equivalent of api.car.ma. So on api.car.ma, you have the, the production APIs. It's all documented and so on. But API Dev uh, has the very, very latest version of the, uh, the API. Like, for example, this morning when I was preparing the last things, I found an issue in one of the APIs, and they're fixing it, and they're updating it. So that will be available on api.dev.car.ma today. 
and uh, potentially, um, usually we do a development, uh, sorry, deployment about once a week for the, the server. So it will go on the api.car.ma usually within a week. Uh, so the server is updated sub daily with the latest features and improvements. Uh, production, uh, we're a bit more protective of our production, obviously. Uh, we have our own uh, trust uh, guards about, uh, for our production environments. Uh, we obviously have a lot of uh, security and, um, and enforcement and monitoring and so on. Uh, we usually do not give a production token uh, or token directly. We usually give development tokens first. And uh, after talking to the team and to uh, see how they're going to use uh, the token, how the, what APIs they're going to call, uh, after seeing uh, some uh, basically APIs being called and uh, the app, then we give access to um, production. I think we've given access to production to um, a couple of partners so far, not a lot. And uh, so api.karma pool or api.car.ma would be the, the website to go to. Uh, so we have a very, very extensive and great API uh, documentation website. So if you go to api.car.ma, you're going to be able to go to the documentation website. So we use Swagger for the documentation. Uh, Swagger is a fantastic tool. Uh, it lets you have some really interactive documentation page. You can actually call APIs directly from the documentation. So if I have a bit of time, I'm going to try to show how to call a couple APIs at the end of my uh, presentation. So it's really good, it's completely interactive. You can, um, you can like expand sections, you can fill in uh, your uh, parameters, you can call the API, you can even authenticate through the API using, uh, using our documentation page. Uh, so we're gonna see a few, uh, a few pages after. So as I was just saying, uh, we support authenticated calls. So a lot of the calls that we would have would require the user to be authenticated. Like for example, say you want to see your profile, you want to see, uh, or you want to get your, uh, your trips and your, the matches for your trips. So then you need to be authenticated. And the, the API documentation website here will actually let you authenticate. So for example, here we can say that uh, this, um, this call is to create a trip or schedule uh, for your authenticated user. And here you can see that uh, you are currently not authenticated. So by clicking on this, you can uh, open a, it will open a pop-up and uh, you will uh, be able to authenticate your user. So we're gonna try that in a few minutes. Uh, we provide uh, a few widgets. So thanks Manfred for the, the, the plug earlier on. And um, so we do provide a few widgets. So if you go to our homepage, actually you can see uh, a few, there's a couple widgets uh, that uh, lets you search for matches, search for trips, search for local users, and uh, we provide the um, documentation on, I think it's on GitHub. And uh, so you have the complete code, and you can actually, directly from this, you can, uh, it will give you the code to actually embed inside your own uh, website, and you can automatically include this widget on your own website. And if you want to have a look at the, um, the source of this, we actually provide the source as well. And you can see that uh, the, um, uh, what is generated here on this is uh, exactly corresponding to what the widget is. So for example, you enter an address here, for example, San Francisco in the States, we're gonna populate it in the source code so you can actually initiate uh, the, um, um, the, the widget with the correct, uh, for example, destination. Say you're a, a shop somewhere and uh, you want to help people go to your place, you could create the widget like this and uh, help people for uh, carpoolers to your shop or to your, usually to your um, workplace. So we have uh, some uh, samples of um, code bases that you can use. You can just copy paste just like this uh, and include that in your application, your web pages and so on. So for example, uh, on Pastebin, we've in included a few samples uh, where you can uh, create two accounts, you can post the location of uh, the driver, you can find nearby users, uh, you can join the car, you can drop off the, the, the passenger and you can rate the driver and so on. So there's, uh, all these uh, have sample codes which we'll call the API. Um, so for sample code, what I'm going to show now, I'm going to show a, a few sample bits of code just to show how easy it is to, for example, create a user or do something very, very simple. Uh, after that, what we're gonna do is that we're gonna go to the website where I'm going to be able to actually call this directly live. Uh, but here, I'm, I'm going to show, like for example, so a lot of you would know curl, with curl or wget, you can, you can call an, um, uh, you can download any web page or call an API on, um, on a website. So here you can call our REST API, 
and you specify um, that uh, you want to sign up a user, you specify the first name, the last name, the email address, the password, gender, and so on, and you say, I want to post to this, um, to this REST uh, URL. You obviously have to specify here your client ID and your client secret. So these are the auth token information details that we gave you when you signed up for the uh, API. And this will create uh, a user for you. So this is how you could, for example, create a user in your application if you wanted to use our uh, API. And if you want to log in a user, uh, this is an example of how you'd, uh, you would log in a user. So you, again, give the username and password and so on. Uh, if you want to get nearby users, so say you want to have a look at all the nearby users around uh, your current location. So we're not active in Paris at the moment. Uh, we're active especially in the States, in Norway, and a bit in, uh, in Ireland as well. Uh, we're starting in Israel and a bit, I think, in Australia. Um, and uh, so you could here, for example, specify your origin, uh, latitude, and longitude. And uh, this so longitude 13, that would be kind of eastern. That might be Germany, actually. Um, and <laughs> and uh, here you can specify basically. Um, I want to say uh, I want to see all the users uh, close to here. Uh, what you can what you can do as well is that you can pick up as a driver. You can pick up a passenger. So we have a lot of different ways so that uh, a passenger can join a car or a driver can pick up a, a user. You can join a car by either uh, like driver user ID or by phone number if you don't have the driver user ID. So the driver can just give you the phone number and you can join that car just by the phone number. Or uh, a passenger can have a, a, a PIN, uh, like a, I think it's a six digit uh, number. They give that to the driver and the driver entered that uh, on the phone. So the passenger doesn't need to have a phone, for example. And then this is uh, how you do it for um, picking up a passenger and um, basically uh, register the passenger inside your car. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to Okay, so I don't know what, it's not very easy. Okay, so this is our uh, API documentation website. And uh, so you, here you can apply. So if you want, you can click on the, on the sign up link here and you will end up on the, the sign-up page where you can give, it, give us your name, your email address, give us also your uh, Twitter account, your um, uh, LinkedIn account, and so on, GitHub if you have as well, and then uh, we'll, um, uh, we'll give you a, a token to access our API. Uh, if you click on the documentation, uh, so you can have a look, uh, look at all our documentation. So again, this is all generated by Swagger. Uh, we, we use enunciate in the code to document all our API, so the code is actually documented inside the code itself. So we use enunciate inside the code to document the code itself, and we use Swagger for the representation here, for the, the web page generation. And in order to do the, the, the plug-in between the two, what we do is that we, uh, we've taken a, um, um, like an open source tool that converts enunciate to, um, to Swagger, but the problem with that tool was that it only supported an older version of Swagger, so we uh, made the modifications, modifications that were needed to support the latest version of Swagger, and we submitted uh, that back to the, um, uh, to the code base. Uh, so here, uh, this is all Swagger. Uh, if you want to have a look, for example, at uh, Discovery, you click here, and you can see all the, um, all the basically the endpoints that you can call. Um, and you can see, for example, I'm going to click on users here. It's going to be a bit more interesting. Uh, you can see the different... So this is a REST API, so you can see the, 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 the HTTP verb, that, uh, the action that you, uh, you're going to have to, to do. For example, it's a get to get preferences for a user. You can put to put the preferences for a user, or delete to delete some preferences. And uh, here, uh, everything is documented. If you click on one of them, uh, you will be able to see the complete documentation of everything you need to do. So I'm going to try to call a couple APIs. So here, uh, this is an API that retrieves the detail for the user. Uh, obviously, because we, are, we have some very strong uh, privacy uh, rules, uh, we only let you get some information about users if you're logged in. So here you can see that I am currently not logged in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to authorize, and hopefully this is going to work. So I'm going to enter my connection details. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going 
this is it. Remember, submit. So hopefully we're going to have, yeah, I think we have Wi-Fi. Didn't work. Okay, and uh, okay, so I am connected now. I have already, uh, I had already accepted the, um, like the auth um, basically request, so I am now connected. You can see this is the on here, and I want to get information about uh, my user. So here it gives you the, a bit of details about the API, a sample re uh, response information, and um, you can enter your own user ID, so I think it's uh, self for your own user ID, or you could ask for information about other users. So we have private profile sections and uh, public profile sections. And here I'm going to ask for all the public profile information about myself. And I'm going to try it. So you can see all the, the response codes. And I got my response body. So here I've called the API live. So this is our documentation website, so you have full access to this. As soon as you um, you get an authentication token from us. As, as soon as you get your old token, you can log into this and you can uh, you can call API. So here, this is my name. Uh, this is a last known address. I had entered some dummy location in London. Uh, I uh, live in Ireland. I work for Karma, Mail, and so on. So this is all some information, some achievements I've reached, like I've coupled a few times and so on. So this is uh, all direct, uh, direct call live uh, on the API. I'm going to try a couple other ones as well. So this I can close. Uh, favorite locations. I can enter again. Uh, self. And I'm going to try it. So all the, the error codes, for example, are all docu uh, documented. And uh, well, I'm uh, documented. Um, uh, I haven't. Okay, and self, try it out. There you go. So here I got all my favorite locations. So I, I work in Alfred Street in Cork, and I usually very often go to Kinsale, live in Donnybrook Cottage, and so on. And the last one, last example, uh, what we're going to do is that I pretend that I'm a passenger, I want to board, uh, to board a car, and I only know the, the driver's phone number because the driver just gave me his uh, phone number. Or it could be just a contact that you have on your phone. And uh, so I'm going to say the rider, so the passenger is me. Uh, I've already, I think, pre-filled in the phone number. So this is a phone number of someone else I know. Uh, you can specify here if you want a free ride or not. A lot of parameters are usually um, optional. One, one issue that I spotted this morning is that uh, this API doesn't allow, for the moment, missing locations. So I'm going to... This is round about where I live in Cork. And accuracy is 150 meters, for example. And I can now call the API. Uh, and again, same thing. I need to log in. Okay. Uh, so specified. Okay, so now I have boarded someone's car and uh, the driver is called Martin G and I'm inside Martin G's car. Uh, so I'm going to get my phone and in theory inside the app, if I open the app, I should be able to see that uh, I am in the car. So the app is opening, and it's just noticed that I have joined the car, and inside the app, I'm now in the car. So by calling the API like this, you have called our server, and because we have one server, so this is the production server, actually, so any app that talks to our server can talk to any other app that talks to the server. So all these apps are compatible. So here, I, in a way, I created a new app with, a new, uh, with the existing API, I created a new app, and I joined someone's car, someone who was potentially using the, the Karma app or another app, 
and basically this is the official car map and this got synchronized automatically. Okay, so uh, any questions now? Yeah, question slide. <laughs> any question? Thanks for your talk, Eric. Um, uh, just, just for clarity, or maybe for my understanding, uh, the way you, you are different to the likes of um, Uber, Lyft, and Hilo is that um, these are all private drivers, right, who yeah. offer their car to, to be pooled to have rides yes. again. Right? So, right? um, so there's a lot of uh, companies like um, uh, Halo, Lyft, Uber, um, uh, there's a few of them like this, um, and usually it's basically it's drivers paid for hire. So they're full-time hires, or some uh, full-time drivers, or potentially part-time drivers, but they drive for profit. Uh, so they are basically they're just taxi drivers, and there's a, there's a very good app. I mean, this, this, these services are fantastic, but they have an app uh, which lets you call a driver and they drive you to wherever you want to go. Uh, they drive for profit, so uh, the fee is all very, very similar to a, a regular taxi, maybe like 20% cheaper, sometimes it's actually more expensive than a taxi depending on where you are, depending on the time of the day as well, because they have like rush hour prices as well. Uh, so it's, it's still for profit. Uh, what, we, what we do is completely different, it's carpooling. So you you're share the cost, so you're going to contribute to the driver's cost, but it's like a fraction of the price uh, that uh, you would pay for a taxi driver. For example, uh, the price varies, but roughly you would pay about 20 cents uh, a mile uh, to a camera driver, which is like nothing. If you did like a 10-mile course, that would be like two uh, or maybe uh, three dollars. So it's not a lot of money. If you did the same course as a, as a taxi, that would be, I don't know, like 50 or 100 dollars. Uh, so we're more like a blah, blah car in a way. Uh, it's a blah, blah car is a very, very popular uh, French carpooling company. Uh, the difference between ka uh, Karma and Blablacar is that Blablacar are only really interested in long distance. Uh, so usually it's inter intercity, so say uh, Paris to Marseille, Paris to Lyon, Paris to uh, Berlin. Uh, they will not do uh, like uh, commuters. They, they say like the, the, the CEO said he was not interested in doing commuter traffic. Uh, we are uh, really into commuter traffic, into reducing uh, the amount of cars on the road uh, at Picard. Do we can say you are the one fifty one to fifty miles carpooling? Uh, yeah, it's a uh, between one and fifty. Fifty. I mean, it depends on your commute. We're really uh, for commuters. Uh, typical commute depends on the location. Uh, between five kilometers and uh, say twenty kilometers is usually the average commute. Uh, so it's usually in this range. But uh, I mean, we ha we have some people who commute for like I don't know hundred kilometers or more. Yeah. So, because uh, I don't know if you know in France right now, so this is why we wanted to have you both, so talking more about global transportation and see exactly one use case. So Karma is not sponsor, we, but we are glad to, uh, to have you there. Uh, but really showing what, how an API solve problem, solve actual problems and, and economic problem and, and every day's problem. But uh, the, the French government tries right now to make a carpooling uh, um, uh, benefits. For example, if you are three or four in the car, you would not pay yes. a lot of stuff. You would have a f kind of specific line and everything. So this is why also we wanted to have you there because it's actually in the moment, right? Uh, in the yes. moment. So, so um, there's a lot of incentives for, for drivers. There's a lot of reasons why drivers or passengers would want to carpool. And the interesting thing is that depending on the location, so as I said earlier on, we have a lot of customers in the States, we have some in Norway, some in, uh, in, uh, in Ireland, so these are the ones we really know the most. Um, they all carpool for completely different reasons. Uh, in Ireland, they tend to carpool to save money or to earn some money for the drivers. Uh, in Norway, uh, they actually carpool usually out of guilt. They feel guilty for the environment, they feel guilty for having a single car on the road, and they really want to, they, they want to like, kill this guilt and they really are going to make a bit of an effort to, uh, to carpool, and uh, this is why they really love our app. Uh, in the States, uh, there's a lot of incentive from the government for um, a toll reduction and for access to uh, carpooler lanes. So in a lot of the tolls in the States, there's one or two lanes for carpoolers. And uh, typically, uh, if you drive from a, uh, like Berkeley to San Francisco on the normal lane, it could take you about an hour. If you use a carpool lane, it could be 20 minutes. And that's the same in the evening as well. So you're saving a lot of time by carpooling, and you're still making a bit of money as well, and you're cutting on the toll. So it's really a win-win situation for them. And it's great that it's starting in France. Yeah. So thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. Thank you.